guys. So, but now you should watch my intros and after that watch the documentary. I must say that I love documentaries, I love TV, and this is one of my favorite documentaries of all time. Thank you, Oprah, for highlighting on such a taboo topic. Okay, so this documentary began with a beautiful, dark skinned girl, and she was talking about basically how much she hated herself. And she hated herself to the point where she wouldn't even call herself black. Like, she didn't like when people called her black. I mean, this girl hated herself to a point where she. Uh, I mean, she was convincing herself in her head, and it was just so heartbreaking to watch. And, I mean, the sad part is there's so many people like her out there. But I want to say that I think it was amazing how her mother was getting her therapy. Because, honestly, those issues, if they're left like that, they'll just keep building up and building up and building up. And that's why you see nowadays a lot of low self low self-esteem, they're chasing after abusive men, um, they're in abusive relationships, they have these horrible friendships, well, I shouldn't say friendships, but people that they hang around with that aren't the best people. And, you know, they have um, eating disorders, they have drug problems, alcohol problems, all these sort of problems, cutting, self-mutilation. And it's just so, it's so sad and it's so heartbreaking. And uh, touching on that, I just, I remember I thought it was really important for me to include um, a segment, um, <coughs> part of the segment um, of, a, of Tara Banks' show. She has talked about skin bleaching, and there's this lady who, basically that was probably her when she was younger, you know, hating her skin, being bullied, etc., etc. And, you know, she basically hated herself so much, was bleaching herself, and, I mean, I can't do it justice by recapping it, it was just so painful, but definitely watch that and you'll see how this is not just some um, flighty, whatever, no big deal issue, this is a big issue, and it causes so many wounds emotionally, and it was so painful for me to watch all these women, all these women just talking about their experiences and how they have both self esteem to the point that many of them are crying, like shedding physical tears today and clearly getting upset, holding back tears. It's so painful. And I know some of you guys are wondering, what's your experience? You're not light-skinned. Um, I'm a dark-skinned woman, and I love my skin color. I have beautiful skin. I get compliments on my skin all the time, and I, I really like my skin. That's actually probably one of my favorite body parts that I love, like parts of myself I love. Um, I, I really like this thing. <laughs> and I, um, I'm proud of my color. I love it. And I honestly can tell you that when I was younger, I never hated my color. I just did it because, for me, I actually grew up in Canada. And in Canada, this was not an issue at all. Skin color, it just wasn't an issue, thankfully. It wasn't only until I got to America in third grade, I began third grade in America, and people, um, even then I didn't pick it up because I was so Canadian, I didn't understand like a lot of the culture in America, and basically people, I know some people as I like, got older would be like, you're so dark, or, you know, they would say things like, you're, um, this person is so dark, or, you know, they would make fun of people that were darker or make it seem like it was a bad thing. And I remember sometimes people would say to me, you're super dark. Like, they mentioned an insult. But to me, because in my head it was just programmed um, to just be a thing, I remember I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it, it Honestly, it didn't get to me. But, I mean, who cares about that? Um, people can say what they want to, but... That's my story, and sadly, there are a lot of people who even have a very different story. They are really viewing their skin as a disability, and that's just heartbreaking. Um, so I guess moving along, uh, 
I thought that the documentary brought up a lot of great points. Um, in regards to history, I thought it was interesting how, of course, they uh, added that in there because some people might not think of that, especially if you were not dark yourself or you just don't know where all this stuff comes from. Um, they talked about, you know, the field slaves versus the house slaves, but they went a little deeper and talked about um, basically how black people in America were not viewed as human beings, but they, they got deeper into just, oh, it was just slavery only. It was deeper than slavery in the sense that it was just not being viewed as a human being. It wasn't just only field slaves versus house slaves. And they talked a lot about discrimination uh, leading up to the present, and they talked about how people would, how colorism sort of began. Um, people basically having parties and saying, oh, um, your light or your hair blows, things like that. Or they would basically say, be beautiful, you have to be lighter than a paper bag. Okay, and that's so ridiculous, right? Because Naomi Campbell is gorgeous. And she is my complexion. She is dark skin. And, I mean, it's just interesting for people to have such a messed up mentality that they think that. Um, I wish that people would touch on a point that is not brought up. I think in terms of history, I really wish that people would say this. And I graduated from Michigan State University with a degree in social science. So I took a lot of classes on colonization and all this sort of stuff. Um, and it didn't begin with slavery. This whole um, disdain for darker skin. This began with colonization. And, and I say this because this is not just an African American issue. This is an issue with black people all over the world. I'm Nigerian American. My parents were directly from Nigeria. And I know that if you go to any African store, uh, you'll find them, they'll sell like shea butter, they'll sell like black soap, and they'll also sell lightning, skin lightning paint. And in Africa, those are very popular. And they're not only popular in Africa, they're popular really around the world. And I really liked how they brought in a Korean American girl to talk about her experience of being darker and going back to Korea and being looked at like, what? what? Like, what the heck? And I hate that. And I, I'm happy that they just made it a, a broader issue. They didn't go so much into depth with how other races are dealing with that issue, but they also talked about like the Afro Latino culture, about how they were talking about, um, they called it like progressing the race to marry somebody lighter than you to make the family better. And personally for me, I've actually heard that before. I, I have. And um, of course that's stupid. <laughs> um, but it is an issue. So that's why I'm saying this is all starts with colonization. And if you're somebody who has no idea about colonization, well, I suggest you go on Amazon and read a book about it because it's very interesting, but it's also very painful. And it'll really open your eyes to why the world, um, parts of the world are in such distress. And it'll let you kind of give you a glimpse about this whole push of Western standards, like the Western standard of beauty. And it'll just give you a really big insight. And of course, that is a topic that is way too big for me to talk about right now, but that is like a summer of a much deeper problem and the effects of colonization are still felt today. And you can see that. And of course that is an extremely big topic to talk about. But um, aside from that, I I also uh, found it interesting how they talk about white men that have married black women and are extremely attracted to their natural hair, to the dark skin, and they also talked about black men that really don't, are attracted to dark skin women, and then black men that are. And I really like how they just gave a diverse group of men 
um, and preferences because at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong if a man is not attracted to a dark skin woman. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, not everybody is going to be attracted to everything. The problem is, and they made a distinction, the problem is when you start saying like, ew, she's ugly, she looks like a roach, she's so dark. That is a problem, okay? Um, but yeah, there's, everybody has their preferences. And I like how they put that out there because they're basically saying that we're not saying that all like, the dark skin women are considered undesirable by anybody. They're just saying that, you know, there are people that have inner views and then there are people that, you know, aren't attracted to dark skin women, but there are plenty of men of all different races, including black men, that are very much attracted to dark skin women. And I'm saying this to a dark skin sister out there who might just feel I'm, that they're undesirable and think that, oh, that they're dark, that they wish they're light. I'm saying this to a dark skin sister who's out there that is using, you know, bleach, bleaching their skin, their beautiful skin, and, and that's so dangerous because that causes effects like cancer and things that will make your skin look bad. So you want you want to drop that. Don't be messing with that. Of course, it has its purpose, you know, for um, certain skin issues, but that's different. That's under a pair of a dermatologist. But not to just be flossing everywhere to become lighter. No. You need to stop that if you're doing that. Um, but there are a lot of men, you know, and that love dark skin. And I know that I, of course, you guys know I've traveled everywhere. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Australia and Nigeria. I live in Canada. I've been to Argentina. I've been to Antarctica, okay? I know that when I went to Argentina, they consider dark skin absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, okay? You could be walking down the street with your classmates, and um, so, you know I'm I'm, I'm dark, I was, and it's like they all just turn at you and say things to you. Um, so that is honestly they just consider that gorgeous. Like they think you're so beautiful if you're a dark skin woman. So dark skin sisters out there, please do not be thinking that. That is the lie from the devil. Okay, you are gorgeous, and there are people who think you are so gorgeous around the world. And it's not just um, there. It's really all over that people think black people, um, you know, like, have you. So it's just, don't be thinking of yourself as ugly. That is just a messed up lie in your head, okay? Drop that. <laughs> Take those bugs out of your ear. Um, so I just thought that was great. But of course, most importantly, you have to love yourself. And when you love yourself and think you're beautiful, then everyone will think you're beautiful because I know my mom would always say, whatever you say you are, people will turn and say, yes, we agree with you. So that's just a little tip. Um, moving along, I also liked how they talked about the media and talked about how the media is a problem. I definitely 100% agree with that. You know, they, they don't show enough black beauty on the runway in the magazine on TV. And when they do show a black person that they were touching on, like they have a light-skinned black person. For example, Beyonce, Ashanti, Solange, Harris Banks. The list can go on and on and on. And of course, for young girls, that is extremely, extremely hurtful to not see someone who looks like you on TV. I know when I was younger, I didn't I thought it was strange that there weren't enough black people on TV. And when they were on TV, they were light skinned. Nobody who I could really relate to, aside from maybe like my own Campbell, but not a lot of people. And this is especially true in the modeling industry. I think that's disgusting. I think all shapes, all skin tones, all ethnicities, all races should be represented because God made all of them and they were all beautiful, okay? Everything's beautiful. God made everything beautiful. And I think that that's why I just love Tyra Banks because in her show, and she said it, and if you look at it, if you if you, if you watch her show, you'll see that she puts um, different shades of black. And on top of that, she puts really light skinned people. Um, and I don't mean only like light skinned black, I mean just like really pale skin, um, really dark skin. All, all shades are included. She has plus size models love that she does that. I really do. Because no one has to be super skinny. Nobody has to be, you know, just looking the same. We're all 
so beautiful. And there are people out there that think that each thing is beautiful. Like, there is somebody for everyone. And, um, like I said, I can't say this enough. God made them all beautiful. And it's disgusting how society likes to put one at the bottom and one at the top when all beauty, all beauty is created beautiful and equal. So we were created in God's image, and that just makes us, with that alone, we're beautiful, okay? That's, all, that's enough. Nothing more needs to be said about that. Um, I guess that another thing that I liked that they put was they showed Michelle Obama. They talked about her and how it's great to have a beautiful, dark-skinned woman in the office and just in showing them such a positive light. And I can't agree more. I love that. I love that. I love it. You know, and at the end of the day, things are getting better in terms of diversity, on TV, and things like that. Um, I remember when I was younger, you know, and this is kind of touching on hair. Uh, hair care products, natural hair care products don't really, and I mean natural, like actually legit, not just the petroleum and mineral oil stuff. I mean real quality hair care products you would find at carolsaga.com. They weren't sold in stores. They, were, they weren't created. Um, but nowadays, you go to CVS, you go to Target, mainstream stores, not anything that can go online, and you find things like that. You find shea moisture being sold there, you know. You, you know, but you find things like that. There's this popular natural hair care movement. So definitely, black beauty is, is, is being more and more appreciated. And it's not perfect, but it's getting better. So um, I'm happy that we are making progress on that. I think I want to leave you with this. And this is an extremely important point. Um, I know that we've been talking about, you know, dark skin women and the society is not viewing them as beautiful, but have you ever noticed that they don't talk about dark skin men? Exactly. This is a microcosm of the problems that society has at large, okay? When it comes to women. Women are viewed as objects, and we're judged on our appearance, and that's not the same with men, okay? I'm not going to say that men are never judged, but obviously, no one can argue that women are judged more. And we're not judged or given credit for what's up here. And this dark skin um, issue is, is the microcosm of women's body, because the skin is a, you know, it's part of our physical appearance. This is a microcosm of society just judging us by our appearance on the outside. So even if you don't have dark skin and you might not necessarily be able to relate to the pain, if I change the words dark skin and put in um, body type, this is the same thing that you see society saying about body type, that you ha women have to be thin. This is the same thing, okay? Like women, we are judged across the board for how we look. I don't care your race, ethnicity, anything like that. We're all judged. And that needs to stop. That's why I really look up to some of these like Oprah, who are just so smart. Michelle Obama, as I said earlier. Women that are powerful businesswomen and that are independent and that are not relying on men and that are pushing forward and pushing through. I love that. And I guess that is all of my two cents. And I will leave you with that thought. But I have to say that you guys are all beautiful. And if anybody tries to say you're not, honestly, let that roll away because they're hurting on the inside for them to talk about you like that. And at the end of the day, I don't care your skin color. I don't care. You're beautiful, okay? And that is all. So, bye, guys.